Have you ever wanted to make your own animation? Well, this Tinker and Create video is going to show you how. Hi, my name is Jess and I am a presenter at SciTech. Welcome to today's Tinker and Create session. Have you ever seen those animations where objects seem to be moving on their own and wondered how they were made? Well, today, in this session, we are going to learn how to make our own stop motion animation. Stop motion animation is the process of manipulating objects to make them appear as they are moving on their own. In other words, you can bring still objects to life. This is done by taking multiple photos of a subject, for example, my elephant. So I would take a picture of my elephant and then I would move it very slightly and I would take another picture. Move it, take a picture. Move it, take a picture and so on. Every time I take a picture, I make sure I remove my hand from the shot so that when we play all the pictures in a sequence, it appears as if my elephant or my subject is moving on its own. Now, of course, it's not moving on its own. You are creating this movement, but you give the illusion of movement. To make an animation, you don't need much at all. You can use anything from toys, modeling clay, pieces cut out of paper or cardboard or any ordinary household items. Some basic tools that you're going to need to make your own stop motion animation is a smartphone or a tablet with access to the internet and a stop motion animation app. In this tinkering session, I'm going to show you how to use the stop motion studio app because it's free and really easy to use, but you could use any other stop motion applications. Just check with an adult that it is okay to download. Now that you know the tool that you need for your stop motion animation, you need to create your own story. What will your animation be about? It can be anything that you like. If you have more than one idea, write them down because they might come in handy later. A storyboard is a series of pictures that show what happens in your animation from beginning to end. A finished storyboard looks a little bit like a comic strip. It's really important to add as much information as you can, for example, what objects you're going to use or maybe what sound effects you want in your animation. Creating a storyboard is important as it helps you organize your thoughts and plan for your animation more effectively. So ask yourself the following questions. What happens in each scene? What will your background look like? What will your characters look like? Anything that comes to mind, write it down on your storyboard. Great, we have our storyboard. It is now time to cast our characters. What do they look like? What can you use to make them? Toys, modeling clay, craft materials, cardboard are all really great options to start with. Now make sure that you ask a grown-up to help you if you need to do any cutting, especially in cardboard, as it can be a little bit tricky. The next step is to build your set. What will it look like and what materials could you use? You could try using cardboard or even just a box. You could cut out pictures out of a magazine or you could lay a tea towel or a pillow cover on the ground and then you could add some elements or objects you found around the house to add a little bit to your set. You just need to use a lot of imagination. Be creative. So we talked about the storyboard, we talked about your characters and your set. It is now time to think about your filming space. There are two main ways that you can shoot your animation. You can either use a straight view by using your phone or your tablet and shooting what is in front of it. Or you could use what we call overhead shots. So that's when you take the shots or the pictures from above. Both are really, really good options, but they let you do slightly different things. A straight view animation is really great for those 3D objects like toys or a tissue box or a jar or big things that you have around the home that you want to use. Overhead shots are really good for things that are rather flat and can't really stand on their own. So if you make something out of cardboard or cut shapes out of paper, maybe overhead shots will be a better option for you. In both cases, your camera needs to be kept extremely still. In this video, we learned 
what a stop motion animation is and how to make one of our own. In the next video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process that I follow to create two animations so that you can build your own at the same time. So before you press play on the next video, make sure that you have the following that you have a tablet or a smartphone that you can use for your animation. You might need to ask a grown-up to borrow theirs. That you have downloaded the Stop Motion Studio app on your phone or tablet. And make sure you ask an adult again to help you with that step. And the last thing is that you need to have an idea. Before you press play, think about what you want your animation to be like. Once you have all of the above, you can press play on the next video and we can build our stop motion animation together. I can't wait to see what you come up with. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.